Hey, this is Dr. Berg again. In this video, we're going to talk about the anatomy of a tumor. So a lot of women are getting these fibroids and uh, general population, men and women are getting polyps. Uh, some people get moles, some people get pimples. If you look very closely in the mirror at your face, you may have all these little bumps that are occurring and then they kind of go away and they come and go and come and go. So there are a lot of things that are constantly changing in the body. You have over 60,000 genetic errors in your DNA every single cell every single day. So you have all these things that are growing and shrinking. So your body is constantly keeping um, these cells in check and they're actually controlling the cellular growth so it doesn't get out of control and create tumors. Uh, today I want to talk about what's behind the scenes. There is one um, interesting thing that occurs before you get a, a tumor or a fibroid or a polyp um, and that is low calcium. Now calcium is the main mineral that controls all of the communication in between the cells it's because you have these things called calcium channels and calcium carries nutrition and information between the cells and that's why a lot of people with low calcium start to get all these issues with extra cell growth. But it's not just low calcium, it's a lot of other factors. But I wanted to mention that what's, but what starts this process is a lack of communication in the cell. The cells, um, these tight junctions right beneath the tumor, they lose control and then your body starts making more and more and more cells um, and out of an out of control fashion and it starts growing a tumor. And what happens is that this will occur if the soil of your body, the terrain of the body, is fertilized with these other factors as well. Nutritional deficiencies, sugar. Did you know that cancer and, and tumors live on sugar? In fact, um, they depend on sugar, but we don't have to worry about that because I know you don't eat sugar. So even the PET scans that monitor and screen for cancer look for those cells that are eating up all the sugar in the body. That's how they detect cancer. So by not eating sugar, you can basically starve off these, these cancer cells. Stress. Stress will set the person up for all sorts of problems with the immune system and more genetic defects. Uh, chemicals. Uh, you have pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, and even chemicals in smoking, chemicals in our food. I just found out that the, the binder that they feed a lot of chickens are fed with formaldehyde. Yeah, that's right. So what happens is these chemicals create alterations in your DNA. Those are called mutations. So mutations are sudden changes within this lifetime. There's sudden errors that go out of control and they can alter your immune protective DNA uh, repair mechanism. So now we can't suppress the tumor anymore and so it grows out of control. And then you have radiation. Now chronic inflammation, let's say you're having a menstrual period every single month. Well you're setting yourself up for great, uh, growing tumors from that terrible heavy crampy cycle. So it really is a combination of all these things but it all starts with this calcium right here. So let's just kind of get into a little bit more on this calcium first because in order to transport the calcium into the tissues, you need vitamin D. And there's even a lot of studies that show that vitamin D reduces cancer simply because it will help you regulate the calcium. So the way it works is vitamin D is absorbed in the intestine by 20 times. So that's the purpose is to get a lot more absorption into the small intestine so it can combine with a certain protein and now once it's connected to that protein it can go through the blood and it can transport through the body. Just straight calcium, like if you take calcium carbonate that are in most supplements, it doesn't really do anything. It's like eating a rock. It's hard to absorb. It's not transported. So you need vitamin D to break it down and to get it absorbed into the blood. So vitamin D is very, very important. Um, if we take a look at um, the world and the equator right in the center where there's a lot of sun, there are very low rates of cancer uh, in this area of the world. It, as you go north in the colder weathers when people don't get as much sun, there's much greater higher incidence of cancer and tumors. Now exception, Japanese women, 
have low rates of breast cancer. And that is because they eat a lot of fish, which have vitamin D, and a lot of eel in their sushi. You know eel has the most vitamin D? Like three ounces is 5,000 international units of vitamin D. It's incredible. So, so we need vitamin D from the sun or a supplement. Always take vitamin D3. And then we also need vitamin F. Okay, now what is vitamin F? Vitamin F is another name for the omega-3 fatty acids like in fish oil. Um, those are the polyunsaturated fatty acids. They're omega-3 fatty acids, and that's why fish oil is also good for anti-cancer uh, because it helps you absorb that calcium. So um, we have vitamin F, transports calcium into the tissues, and then vitamin K2, and I've done a video on this. Vitamin K2 drives the calcium all the way into the bone, and it cleans up the arteries, and it helps you modal uh, mobilize calcium through the body. And if you notice, vitamin D3, vitamin F, K2, those are all fat vitamins. So we need fat to mobilize calcium. And what are people telling you to, to avoid? Fat. There's also another vitamin that's very uh, essential for calcium, and I forgot to put that. That's vitamin A. Yeah. And these vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin A, if you look them up, control um, what's called the differentiation of what cells turn into. So if you're for example, deficient in vitamin A, you'll have all this rough skin because the cells can't be uh, duplicated exactly like they should. So again, these vitamins are very, very important in the transportation of minerals and the protection of tumors. Now, I just want to get into one more thing, and that would be um, the tumor cell and the cancer cell uh, will hijack your blood flow to, because they need blood. They need oxygen in some cases to feed that tumor and grow it and that's called angiogenesis if you want to look that up but that's basically the all these blood vessels are started feeding the tumor and the cancer and it just starts growing out of control but what's interesting is what will stop the process of going from a benign to a malignant uh, tumor or cancer would be phytonutrients so there's a lot of studies being done now on these phytonutrients that would be all those great cruciferous vegetables that you're eating right now, and the kale, those are essential for the uh, blockage of this blood flow to the tumor and to cancer. And that's why phytonutrients are very anti-cancer. So those are some of the, the points and the highlights of tumors and your skin with these little pimples and then how your body is constantly trying to counter this. It's very, very important to keep the the soil of your body, the terrain, very, help, help, um, very healthy through these factors right here. So I hope that kind of gave you some insights on why people get tumors and why they might not. So apply this information and I will see you in the next video.